So you're either a long time user of Kubernetes or you're new and you've just started. Perhaps you have a cluster up and running and you've deployed a couple of pods and you've come across secrets and config maps. You create those and you mount them into your pods. Whenever you make config map updates within a cluster, you may have noticed that the config map does propagate to the pods. I covered this in my Kubernetes Lightning series on a dedicated video about config maps. And if you've been using Kubernetes in production, you probably notice that applications don't necessarily hot reload configurations or secrets. Whenever a config or a secret secret changes, you generally have to go and restart these pods. This is where the K8S reloader comes in. Today we're going to be taking a look at this frustrating issue and how the reloader solves this. So without further ado, let's go. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate this, I'm going to hop into my terminal and I'm going to create a kind cluster using a utility called kind. This allows me to create a small Kubernetes cluster locally that I can use for testing. And in this demo, I'm going to be using Kubernetes 1.33. And now that our cluster is ready to go, I can do kubectl get nodes. We can see our Kubernetes one node cluster is coming up. After a couple of seconds, it's now ready to go. And now I have an example con config map over here. You can see kind is config map. It's called example config. I have some simple configuration components here. So firstly, it's just the key value pair that we inject into a pod as an environment variable. And the other can demonstrate how to mount a file into a pod. So this is what I use to demonstrate the usage of a config map. Let me go ahead and apply that config map to our Kubernetes cluster using kubectl apply. I go ahead and do that. I can then say kubectl get cm and we can see our config map is right there. Now, similarly to the config map, I may also have a Kubernetes secret. This example, I have a secret here, kind of secret. The name is just my secret, specify a namespace. And here I have some key value pairs as well. One is a file called secret.json. The other one is just an API key. And this I've used in my Kubernetes secret video to demonstrate how secrets work. So the reloader works on config maps as well as secrets. To demonstrate this, over here I have a kind deployment. My deployment name is example deploy. I give it some labels and annotations. I'm running two replicas here. So I'm going to have two pods, a basic rolling update strategy, some pod labels. And here I have a simple example app container. Now in our config map video, we've learned how to use a config map. In our secrets video, we've taken a look at how to use a secret. Both of these can inject into environment variables. That's one way to use it. Or we can mount as files. So I've to find a volume here with my config volume. And if I expand the container, we can see that I have an environment variable and I'm referring to the config map like so. And here I'm specifically pointing that I want the config enabled key inside of the config map. We take a look at our config map. That's that key over there. So I want to inject this value as an environment variable. So I specify that over here and it'll inject into my environment variable called configuration enabled. So we have an environment variable as well as a volume mount where I mount this exact config map and I mount it into the location slash configs. And to demonstrate how we're going to use this environment variable as well as volume mounts, I actually created a small container. So I'm just using Ubuntu as an image. I'm running a bash command. And what I'm going to do within here is I'm going to run a simple while loop. And what this while loop will do is just read the contents and basically just echo it out. So at the start of the container, we'll read out the configuration.json file content into a variable called config and we'll echo that out. And then what we'll do is we'll write a while loop that pretty much just prints out these environment variables to the screen. So this simulates a basic microservice or an application which only reads configurations or secrets at startup. Most applications are designed to do this. They don't actually hot reload configurations or secret when they changed. In our config map video, I demonstrated that the configuration file inside the pod actually does change. So when you change a config map, for example, if I had to go to this config map and bump 
this last number to 1 and use kubectl to apply it, the value will propagate to the pod. So we'll be able to see the value inside the pod as updated. But because the application only reads the file when it starts up, it never gets the new value. That is why most pods or applications need a restart when we change a secret or a config map. And this is where the KDS reloader comes in. So this is what this little loop demonstrates. We're pretending to be an app that reads a config when it starts up. And then we just simply loop. We do our business, but we're just going to print what we've read out during startup every five seconds. So by looking at the kubectl log command and looking at the logs of this pod, we'll see the value it reads at startup and we'll see and notice that the value may never change. To demonstrate that, I'm going to apply that deployment YAML. Go ahead and run that. I can do kubectl get deploy. We can see our deployment is over there. Two pods coming up. So kubectl get pods to see them. They're starting to create. We've got one up and running. And what we can do is we can do kubectl logs and the name of the pod. And we'll see that it has the current value, which is 1.0.0.0 as the version. So this is the current value that it read during startup. We can also see our environment variable is the same value that's inside the config map. So here we see version is one, configuration enabled is true. We jump into the config map and this is exactly what we have here. Config enabled is true, version is one. If I go ahead and bump this number and perhaps disable this value, I jump into my terminal and I go ahead and apply that config. You can see it's been applied. We can do kubectl get cm. We can take that name, say minus o as yaml. We can see the changes are made within the config map. We can then do kubectl get pods, grab one of the pod names, exec into that pod, just get a simple bash terminal. We can cat out the configs, config.json, and we can see the value has actually updated. We can exit out of here, but notice the value has updated in the pod as 1.0.1, but when I do kubectl logs on that pod, it's still only getting the value, which is the old one. That is because the pod, the application code, reads the value at startup and doesn't go in hot reload. And this is the Reloader project. It's available on GitHub. It's called Reloader. So Reloader is a simple Kubernetes controller that automatically triggers rollouts of workloads like deployments, stateful sets, daemon sets, and so forth when reference secrets or config maps are updated. And we've now seen that in traditional Kubernetes setup, updating a secret or config map does not automatically restart or redeploy your workloads. So what Reloader does is it bridges that gap. So it watches for changes. So you don't need manual restarts and it integrates well with an existing Kubernetes architecture. So if you're using something like external secrets, sealed secrets, certificates, or you're just using secrets or config maps, like we've just done, they become watched by the reloader controller. So we're going to go ahead and deploy this reloader and this reloader will watch for changes on secrets or config maps and simply triggers a rollout to deployments, deployment config, daemon set, stateful set, Argo rollouts, cron jobs, and it can also send notifications. So they have a quick start guide and basically what we do to enable it once we have the reloader running is we simply annotate the workload we want as an opt-in basis. So we can either opt in and say the reloader should watch everything in our cluster or we can simply just opt in at a deployment level so some deployments in certain namespaces can opt in so we can do manual opt-in or automated opt-in so if we take a look at the installation it supports helm charts as well as vanilla kubernetes manifest so you can just use kubectl apply to apply it you could use customize if that's your favorite tool and then there are a bunch of configuration options you can use so what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and install it using the helm command. To go ahead and install this, what I'm going to do is jump into a terminal, make sure my kubectl is pointing to my cluster. I'm then going to do helm repo add, and I'm going to add the helm repo that contains this chart. I always like to print out the versions that are available. So we know we want the reloader chart. I'm going to search the repo and show all the versions so I can see what's latest. So here we can see we have a chart 2.1.5. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And what I'd like to do is put that version into an environment variable 
variable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to use Helm install. I'm going to say Helm install reloader pointed to that chart. I want to create a new namespace and I'm going to create a namespace called reloader, send in that chart version, and I'm going to specify a YAML file for my values. This allows me to customize reloader according to my needs. We'll take a look at this in a second. Go ahead and run this. This will start deploying reloader. I can then do kubectl minus n in the reloader namespace get pods and we can see we have that simple reloader controller running which is now watching for secrets or config maps depending on how we configured it. We can tell the reloader what we want it to do. As I mentioned earlier we can tell it to opt in on everything, only look at certain namespaces, only perform updates on config maps or only perform it on secrets. This is entirely up to you. So here is an example of my values file. I've gone ahead and just turned off the auto reload on all because I want mine to be a specific opt-in basis. I've gone ahead and put a namespace selector because I only want pods inside of the default namespace to opt into this. So I don't want to affect other customers in other namespaces. I can say I want to ignore namespaces. So maybe certain namespaces you don't want to be involved in this. You can ignore secrets and ignore config maps if you want. So you can make this very specific to your needs. A good way to troubleshoot to make sure your config is correct is to look at the logs of the reloader controller. If I run that, we can see that it's starting reloader. We can see here that namespace selector is set, so it will only detect changes in namespaces with these labels, which is metadata.name equals default. And what we want to make sure is that we can see this message over here, which says added namespaces to be watched default. So we know that our namespace selector over here is actually working. And we can confirm this by seeing in the logs that it's added our namespace. It also tells us what type of resources is being watched, like config maps and secrets. So you want to make sure your values file is correct before you start making changes to all your pods and deployments. So now with Reloader ready to go, let's go ahead and check our pod. So I'm going to do kubectl get pods. We're going to do kubectl logs on one of the pods, and we can see that it's still reading the old values. Let's go ahead and make a change to our config map. And let's bump this number up to point two. And let's leave this value as false. Let's jump to our terminal and apply the change to the config map. And if we do kubectl get pods now, you'll notice that new pods are automatically starting up and old pods are automatically terminating. This is the reloader in action. On my deployment YAML, I actually have a specialized annotation which tells the controller that I want to opt in on both secrets and config maps. So this is an option you can put on deployments to tell the reloader to watch your deployment pods. So now you can see the pod rollout automatically happened. And if I do kubectl logs on these newly created pods, you can see they have the correct values as well as the environment variable rolled out. If you want to learn how to customize this even more, you can take a look at the full Helm chart configuration file over here. This will take you to the Reloader Helm chart page, how to install it, and all the parameters. So it's got some global parameters and some common parameters, and some of the ones you'll see in my example YAML file. There's a lot of flexibility here. And if you want to check out the source code to this guide, you can go to the Docker development YouTube series on GitHub. The link is in the description. And if you expand the Kubernetes Kubernetes folder, you will find a reloader folder under the Kubernetes folder with a readme. And this readme is our introduction to the KAS reloader. It points to the actual original project. We create a kind cluster. We deploy an example config map and secrets. I show you how to install reloader, all the steps we followed today. So you can check out the source code link down below so you can follow along with this video. So hopefully that video helps you automatically roll out pods when secrets and config maps changes. Let me know down in the comments below if you're using Reloader in production and how it's working for you. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see and if you'd like to support the channel, like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when I upload next. And if you want to support the channel even further, hit the join button down below to become a YouTube member. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.